So <clears throat> today we have a question and answer session and uh, I think almost 15 questions or something have been put or 15 or 20 questions have been put already. The, the questions are available on your, on your mobile. You can see all the questions and uh, but I'll display it so we can see it on the screen and uh, please uh, feel absolutely free to uh, interact um, after some time as we finish the questions we can continue to interact okay just uh, if you have any doubt please uh, you can put your hand on the reactions and all that so now i will we'll start with the question brother sam is there with us sam is presently in uh, alway kerala he has joined us he is uh, uh, one of our brothers who is a good mature brother in the lord so i'm going to share the screen so these are the questions okay these are all the questions that you have put and so i'm going to display okay so uh, both of us will answer you can pray for us as we answer this according to the scriptures and we will try to be brief so that we can cover as many okay so so you can see now clearly everybody can see it just give me a feedback yes brother yes brother so it says how not to lose your cool in the heated up situations or during temptations how to discern two kinds of wisdom according to james 3 13 to 16. so two two questions in this two queries the first one how not to lose your cool in the heated situations or during temptations what brother or sister means is that uh, in particular situations we are provoked okay by somebody else and uh, maybe we are talking we are having a conversation and we don't agree so we get heated up okay and then or some we go to a shop and the shopkeeper uh, does not do something properly he maybe he he gives you a, not a good product or so we have some situations like this a common situation both in the house outside everywhere okay and uh, as a christian whether when we get heated up and angry so what happens is whenever we get heated up and angry we speak anything our control may not be proper the words that we use and moreover moreover uh, is that the way that Jesus would uh, behave? Because we all want to be as his disciples. Primary thing for us is we want to be like Jesus. So let us see how Jesus was in Matthew chapter Matthew chapter 12. In Matthew chapter 12, in verse, uh, speaking about Jesus in verse 19, it says, he will not quarrel nor cry out nor will anyone hear his voice in the street okay you can never find jesus in any of the in the in any in the gospels quarreling with anybody people used to quarrel with him but he would not call okay so he's our example and um, he will give us grace okay he will god will give us the grace all we have to ask is Bible says sin shall not have dominion and quarreling is also a sin. So sin shall not have dominion over us. So when we have the tendency to quarrel, I have the tendency to quarrel, but when I ask God to give me grace, uh, uh, it God gives me grace to not to quarrel. Okay. There's another word which uh, is helpful in uh, Proverbs chapter 17, Proverbs 17 verse 14. Okay, 17. If you have your Bibles, you can open. Otherwise, I'll read it. Proverbs 17, 14 says, The beginning of strife is like letting out water. So abandon the quarrel before it breaks out. So between two people, maybe two brothers, 
maybe husband and wife maybe uh, anybody two people it takes to quarrel so beginning of strife is like letting out of water so you have a tap water which is open so to stop the quarrel one of them has to close okay once you close the tap the water stops similarly one of us if we close our mouth the quarrel will stop so that is a very good is a very good principle very good principle for us to follow about whenever we are in a quarrel or heated argument slowly stop stop the thing and the quarrel goes goes off so that is the uh, and moreover uh, the uh, god is the one who gives us grace sin shall not have dominion over us that is the promise that god has given whatever our sin is okay so this sin of quarreling we are, say lord i don't want how to be like you then soon our life will keep on changing and we will come to a rest in our life in very heated up situations now about the wisdom in uh, uh, in uh, james chapter 3 uh, james chapter 3 it says verse 13 who among you is wise and understanding let him show by his good behavior his deeds in the gentleness of wisdom so we find that wisdom always has that gentleness huh? and but if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart do not be arrogant so here we say here we see two types of wisdom one is a good behavior and gentleness that's one sort of wisdom okay good behavior in his deeds and gentleness that's the one wisdom the other one is bitter jealousy and selfish ambition okay uh, so this wisdom is not from above it is earthly natural and demonic okay whereas uh, the wisdom from above is pure verse 17 peaceable gentle reasonable full of mercy and good fruits unwavering without hypocrisy okay so so we see the two types of wisdom one one wisdom uh, which is from above has got all these good fruits it's peaceable a man of wisdom is always peaceable he is gentle he is reasonable he is full of mercy good fruits unwavering without hypocrisy and uh, the one who has got that wisdom the bible says that's a wisdom from the devil that is demonic and the natural you see the natural person wants to be ambitious he wants to put down one and climb on that's a natural that's a natural wisdom which is there in the Uh, corporate world and all other things okay but we don't want that hope that is answered so we go to the next one okay there's a comment here somebody has also put a comment how to overcome anger in heated up situations so uh, again as i said how to overcome to overcome anything we need the grace of god okay and the grace of god is abundantly available bible says where sin abounds grace doth all the more abound so we are living in this new covenant uh time where grace is available for every sin so we can ask god and and by trusting his promises we will be able to overcome so we go to the next one and you know that first question had five votes that means five people had a uh had this question on their uh, mind so the next one is how to deal with pressure related to studies uh how to deal with pressure related to studies the sam would you like to answer this yeah i think uh we can uh uh see in uh, certain academic things things uh, sometimes we have got quite a lot of pressure quite a lot of topics to cover for the exam and things like that what i used to do is uh, i used to make a time table uh, so that uh, you know sometimes i i will not be able to follow but still i try to do as much as possible and sometimes again i'll make another time table uh to cover as much as possible so 
we have to have that time management uh, more and more and we have to look to god for help in all these matters see uh, by just by taking tension we will not be able to will just accumulate the problem only but what god wants us is to uh take it in a very uh in a we have, we have to take it seriously and take it in a restful way and to cover things uh as much as possible each day and not to get into tension not to get into uh tension in our mind that will only aggravate the problem so we have to look to god and we, we can ask for his help but what i found in my life is uh especially before the exam time and i have to cover lots of portion i used to make time table for each other each of the days and decide it uh, like base wise and try to follow that time table as much as possible certain times i will not be able to but again i'll make another time table and like that i used to uh, cover the topics so that is what i want to say yeah as per sam said we must we have got our god to we are children of god so we can commit it to god so that will give us also more rest you know so uh, other than what he said about uh, planning and okay all that so just a minute so the next one is how to get rid of lust fully like joseph how much time does it take how should our behavior be with the opposite sex in church and in the world too so uh, see lust is there in our flesh okay and uh, that is a natural thing the lust being in the flesh is a natural thing but we should not give in to the lust as it says in james uh it says um, in james chapter 1 verse 14 but each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust okay the lust is there in our flesh there dwells no good thing till the end of our life okay so the lust will not be there only during young age lust will be there right up to when that is that also shows that we are natural that we have got a, we have got a, we, is a, we are a healthy human being because the temptation if it is there that is only shows that we are human we are human and we are healthy but what we do with the temptation is the most important thing okay uh, that lust is there and uh, what joseph did was he was a young man but uh, and he was not even living in the time of grace but he lived because of the fear of the lord for him he was taught by abraham and isaac probably abraham was living i do not know but isaac jacob they all taught about the living god and this boy um, got the fear of the lord whereas the other brothers did not get that they they he got the fear of the lord and the fear of the lord was strong in him that I mean, reverence so that i should not i should not uh, displease my heavenly father my my god i should not displease my god that time yeah so because of that he got grace he got some grace to keep away and what he did was he he ran away from the uh, that is what we have to do whenever we feel uh, a temptation especially of the opposite sex if we go nearer the temptation will become more so we should avoid we should see ways where suppose we are attracted to a particular girl and it's not god's will then we don't go to that particular place we we go in some other direction i'm not saying that if it, uh, so so it's that way so how should we behave with the and how much time it takes oh uh, it is a life law even today i have to be careful 
of course uh, god has given much grace but i cannot take it lightly i cannot put my guard down even today okay at my age so uh, it is not uh, not that in some time but it is one thing i want to say brothers and sisters that in our young age especially in our 20s we must be must go to god and give ask for grace to be an overcomer in this area not when we are 30 and 40 but in our young age itself that's what i want to do in my I mean, that, that's what i my prayer was in my 20s god gave me the grace to seek him for this okay so that then later on it became more easier so i want to challenge you that don't wait for this but this is an area where we need to ask god to give us grace to be overcomers not that we will not fall but to be an overcomer not to be not to always fall into that but to be able to stand and walk huh? so this in this area and god will give us grace for that so how should our behavior be with opposite sex the opposite sex uh, our behavior should be uh, normal should be normal uh, that we should be be able to speak to them in normal way but realize that 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 snare of temptation if that any time that is there we have to be careful otherwise we have to uh, uh, talk in a normal way whether it's in the church uh, or outside but there's a danger when we go and we should never be alone with the opposite sex in any place that should never be there in any place alone with the opposite sex very dangerous okay but otherwise in the church we can talk normally as brothers and sisters we can talk and as colleagues we can talk but there's always a danger and that as long as we are aware of it and as we uh, whenever we realize we can go to god and and then take the proper action sam you want to say something uh i just want to show that verse in uh, first timothy chapter 5 verse 2 that is a good attitude to follow with respect to opposite sex if is, if we are dealing with an older woman we have to uh we can talk to them as mothers and with younger women with all purity as sisters so that is a very good verse to follow uh sometimes uh, many times we have to deal with opposite sex and at the back of our mind just to remember lord i want to to have just just this prayer lord help me to talk to this person as my mother or help me to talk to this person deal with this person as my sister you know just have that prayer at the back of our mind no that will really help us in this matter okay is it sam you take like to take this and you can read it uh is it uncertain to have ups and downs in spiritual growth after getting baptized like one day you feel like your life life is pleasing to god and on some days your old habits or weaknesses hits you badly yeah that is uh, especially in the beginning of our christian life there will be quite a lot of ups and downs and that was what i found also in my own life but as we grow in the lord as we mature in the lord Uh, our Christian life will become more and more steady, and that is what God wants us to be. So, don't be discouraged because uh, these ups and downs are there. But we have to just, uh, we have to just go, uh, go on in our Christian life, and we should not live by our feelings. Uh, see, some days the feelings may be very good. Some days, certain days, feelings may be quite down. so see uh sometimes you know you can certain days may be quite sunny days sunshine may be very bright certain other days will be cloudy so in the same way in our in our personal life also certain days we may feel 
uh, exuberant, ex extremely joyful. Certain other, other days we may be a little gloomy. We should not just go by that at all. We have to, we have to use our will and say, Lord, I want to obey you. Look to God for help. Say, our reading a Bible or, or doing different things, going to church or whatever different things that we do should never be based on what we feel like. You have to just do what is right to do and ignore the feelings completely. That is something that we have to, uh, we have to remember all the time. And it's also written here, uh, certain days, uh, our old habits and weaknesses, it's as badly. Yeah. See, what we have to remember when we fall into any sin is never get condemned about it. What we have to remember is we have to just get up quickly, confess our sin, repent of it, and just proceed in our life. Bible says of a righteous man, righteous man falls seven times, but gets up. So what is the definition of a righteous man? Righteous man is not a person who never sins. No, he may fall many times. But most important thing is we have to get up quickly, confess it, forsake it, and to continue. So we should never ignore our, uh, see, I don't know, this old habits may be like, it can be things like anger and uh, jealousy and things like that. That we should never ignore in our life. We have to take every sin seriously. And whenever we fall into sin, not to get condemned about it, but confess, forsake, and uh, just go on in our Christian life. So just think of a small child. A small child learns to walk as it falls so, so many, so many, so many times. But that child is not just lying down there. It, it gets up quickly and tries to walk again and again. And that's what we have to do in our Christian life also. Uh, if we fall and just lie down there, we'll never make any progress. We have to learn to get up quickly. And again, we, after some time, we may fall again, get up. So remember this verse in 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. That's a good verse to remember. If we confess our sin, God is faithful to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So that is what we have to do. Don't go by feelings. We have to live by faith. Okay. How can I lose interest on this world and grow in interest on the Lord Jesus? Okay. So the world is a very uh, attractive thing. I mean, uh, so one of the pulls uh, that the Christian faces is the world. The Bible says the lust of the eyes, the lust of the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. This is of the world. So that's a big enemy. And those who are a friend of the world become an enemy of God. So uh, so this is a big conflict for each one of us as Christians. As, as we become a believer, we are uh, basically, Jesus said, uh, they are not of the world. Okay, As I am not of the world. So we are uh, citizens of a, another heavenly kingdom. So we are, but then we are living on this earth and the, we get tempted the pull of the world is there but to grow in interest on the lord jesus is that when we have come to know christ and become his child we have to develop that love relationship with the lord jesus and say lord i want you more than anything else see there are so many things that we have in on, on our uh, you know likes uh, we have uh, ambitions and you know so many different things are there but where does jesus stand when jesus is in the first place then the world loses its power as long as when jesus we have to come, come to the place where jesus comes to the first place and that is our heart's cry uh, the bible says uh, in the apostle paul said I want to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. I want to know him. And uh, blessed are 
those who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be satisfied so there are two or three things one is we have to hunger for god and uh, god god actually waits for us to hunger for him so hunger and thirst for him and he says those who hunger for him will get satisfied and uh, a cry in our heart to know god more to know god more that was the cry of the apostle paul and if these two things are there we will keep on uh, increasing in our love and devotion for god and and god will come to the first place in our life okay and then it's the world is down okay so the way to put the world down is to hunger and thirst for god and say lord jesus i want you to be the most precious person the pearl of great price for me that is the way and uh, that comes the, you don't need to wait for a lifetime for that it can come it should come soon basically it can take time if we are not very fervent you want to say anything sir yeah uh, actually christian life is actually a relationship with god uh, as the relationship with god becomes stronger the world will lose its power so actually what i found in my life is i i i wanted that fellowship with god to be really sweet in my life uh the bible says that in his presence that that's the verse in psalm 16 last verse in his presence is fullness of joy and on his right hand are pleasures forever so the real pleasure greatest pleasure we can find in our christian life is truly to uh taste jesus christ it may take time see initially it was so long, not not like that with me but as i began to taste jesus more and more automatically the world began to lose its interest so bible says taste and see that the lord is good so we uh, see however we explain an apple we'll never be able to understand anything but when we taste an apple when we taste an orange the same way we have to taste jesus christ and once we really taste jesus other things will really lose its interest so that is what i found in my life so i i want to encourage all of you this a battle we all face in our christian life attraction of the world is really the pull of the world is really big but the way to overcome is to see that jesus is so precious that jesus is so wonderful to see that jesus is so beautiful and so wonderful to taste and so that we that we have to develop in our christian life sir go ahead yeah the question is how to discern and control the thoughts and the imaginations of our own and let god govern our thinking yeah so how to know whether certain thoughts and imaginations are our own see what the best way is to compare it with the scripture so we are, when we read scripture and when we know scripture uh we can see whether uh, some thoughts or some things that have come up, come up in our mind is according to god's word or not so if it's not according to god's word we have to uh, reject it but see every day so many thoughts come into our mind uh we should not get just uh, discouraged or condemned because of that that is quite natural for all of us but what i uh what i used to do is see it's written how can uh, god control govern our thinking see god has given us a uh, holy spirit in a third person of trinity holy spirit in our heart and the holy spirit will tell us see that i don't want you to think that pattern of thought you no know, that is say sometimes it can be an angry thought 
or can some sometimes it can be a lustful thought some can sometimes it can be a jealous thought so whatever it is many times so many times i heard the holy spirit telling i don't want you to think on that line don't think on that pattern and immediately to just take our thoughts and say lord i don't want to think so cooperate with the holy spirit as he speaks in our heart and uh, i i want to uh, i want all the young brothers to develop this habit of listening to the holy spirit the holy spirit is our helper and uh, today holy spirit is given to the hearts of all his children is there in our heart and holy spirit is working in our heart and he's trying to help us and that's why he many times he, he alerts us in our thoughts not to think in certain lines uh and sometimes it will say think positively about that person don't think negatively and like that holy spirit will help us and if we yield to the uh prompting to the holy spirit that's the way we can govern our thought life that is what i found in my life there is another uh, uh question on thoughts so we will further talk on our, on it uh yeah similar question is there so go for it yeah this is the one praise the lord brother sister could you tell how to live a holy life without inch of unholiness even in thoughts because thoughts proceed to actions so very very good question so very good question <clears throat> uh see there are three things one is uh, three uh, type of actions that we can do which will cause us to do good or cause us to do evil that those are uh, uh, thoughts words and deeds so we can have good thoughts good deeds good uh, good words or we can have uh, evil thoughts evil words and uh, evil deeds okay uh, the words and deeds words and deeds are very visible okay when when we speak something and when we do something if it is if it is bad then we are we are aware of it the words that we spoken some 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 bad things we have spoken or some bad deeds that we, then we we can get convicted if we are we are uh, we have a tender heart but these thoughts are more subtle when we think we may not think evil thoughts but uh, instead of some very good thoughts we can get diverted slowly into negative thinking about a person okay as this uh, brother has said uh, brother or sister has written because the, the thoughts they go they get diverted but but you know the life of jesus is that his thoughts were always pure okay so the bible is the only one uh, book which can reveal the thoughts and intents of a man okay no other book because so powerful it is it can thought it can when we read the word of god it can reveal the thoughts and intentions of a heart and god is interested not only in our exterior but our interior and a person who is interested that's why i said this question is very good a person who is interested in the thought life is a is a will progress much more because Uh, uh, the thoughts, as as is written here, thoughts proceed to actions. Where we can find that verse in Matthew chapter, in Matthew chapter twelve. I want you to remember this particular passage because it has helped me a lot. Matthew chapter twelve, verse thirty-three uh, onwards. Either make the tree good. and its fruit good or make the tree bad and its fruit bad for the tree is known by the fruit you brood of vipers how can you be being evil speak what is good 
for the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart okay so when people jesus is saying you pharisees how can you speak what is good because your your heart is full of evil you're always thinking evil so only evil will come out then verse 35 the good man out of his good treasure brings forth what is good and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth what is evil so what happens about our thoughts is when we think uh, when we think good thoughts it comes and resides in our heart okay so we have a good treasure okay but if we think evil or think bad even negative about people those slowly comes and resides in our in our heart okay and we respond in that same manner to people so we have to be very careful uh, the holy spirit makes us uh, makes us alert that's a beautiful part of it it's not our striving if i try to strive and i'll get into unrest but i say i want to have a pure thought life like jesus the mind of christ and then the holy spirit will alert me when my mind is going to a little bit negative side about so i want to think brothers and sisters i want to think the good and noble thoughts positive thoughts about every human being every human being without exception because I don't want to have a single bad treasure in my heart. I don't want to have. I want to have only good treasure. Okay. So every time I talk to a person, it's out of a out of a good heart, not with some residing uh, bad treasure. I try to speak something good. That is hypocrisy. So, so this is a this is the way it is. And uh, what we uh, inch of unholiness even in our thoughts is. It's, uh, uh, God, as the Sam said, we don't have to condemn ourselves, okay? Because uh, God knows our sincerity and so that unholiness and purity and all that, that is, that is, God is, God is the one who is keeping us. So we just put our life into his hands. Okay, uh, Sam, you can answer this because I also need a little bit of this procrastination. I, I find myself procrastinating how, a lot. How to make use of time wisely and productively? How to get rid of laziness and procrastination? Procrastination means like uh, delaying things. We, uh, I'll do it sometimes later kind of attitude. See, that is there in all of us. Uh, we have to fight this battle against laziness all our life. But uh, just remember some of these verses like uh, Ecclesiastes 9.10. It says, uh, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your heart. See, that's a wonderful verse to remember. Uh, it's a re word spoken by Solomon. Whatever whatever your hand finds to do. We say, for example, when you are at home, there are so many things to do, maybe to help your mother, maybe to fold the clothes, maybe to uh, arrange certain things. There are so many, so many things to do every time. So don't just be lazy. Just as this verse says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your heart. See, that's a, a uh, very good verse to follow. And also Romans 12, 11 is another good verse to remember. Not lagging behind in diligence, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So, you know, all of our tendency is to uh, lag, to lag behind. But this verse says, don't lag behind in diligence, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Now, serving the Lord does not mean that we have to go and evangelize or we have to go and preach somewhere. No. Even when you are helping or washing plates in the home, you are actually serving the Lord. I don't know whether you've heard of a man called Lawrence who lived uh, many years ago. He, he used to say that even when I'm washing plates in the kitchen, he was actually a cook in the monastery. He was a Catholic, but he was a great saint of God. He said, even when I'm washing vessels or in the kitchen, uh, the, I can have the eat 
equal presence of God as when I'm in the church worshiping the Lord. So that is what uh, we have to remember that wherever we are, whatever things we do, even in study, what if we have to study something, do it with all our diligence. The Bible says we have to learn from an ant. You can see that and uh, uh, that's a verse that uh, comes twice. I think Proverbs 6 and Proverbs 25. See, it's written there that uh, maybe I can just uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 25. Hmm. Uh, no, uh, chapter 24. So it's written there that a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of hands to rest then your poverty will come like a robber and you're born like an arm, armed man. So, you know, if we give allowance for little laziness, little slumber, you know, that is, it has got a tendency to just invade us and make us more and more lazy. So that's why we have to, uh, we have to fight against that all the time, all the time in our life fight against this attitude of, say, for example, uh, in reading Bible, we, we can be quite lazy for that, but actually then our, it's our spiritual life that will suffer. So that's something that we have to battle always in our life. And this tendency of procrastination, delaying it. See, many times, many things won't get done at all when we postpone certain matters. So that is another thing that we have to fight. Try to uh, try to do it as quick as possible. You know, I also see the tendency. Sometimes I, I'll do it later. I'll do it later, and never gets done at all. So that is all. These are things that we have to fight in our Christian life. How to free from double-minded and how to free from expectations from people rather than God. So you have uh, two things. One is how to be free from double-mindedness. And what is double-mindedness? Means you're, we are focusing not on one thing but two things. Okay? That is to be double-minded. One is uh, we we can say, for example, uh, we want to please God. Okay, we want to follow God. But the other mind is, what will people think? Will they, will they be displeased? Okay, so that is a double-minded mind. Then we are, we have got two minds. One is, we are thinking, uh, we are right now talking about in terms of God. So we have a desire to follow God. But then, so that's a, there's a word that says they, uh, uh, what the, some people, you know, so they wanted to please men rather than God, you know, so uh, that, that will not do, that will not take us on in our walk with the Lord. So uh, double-mindedness, it says in uh, James, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He will never get anything from the Lord. So let's read that verse. Very powerful word against double mindedness. Double mindedness is not something which which will benefit us at all. So it says uh, verse six. Uh, verse five says, But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men generously and without reproach, it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without any doubting. For he who doubts is like the serve of the sea driven and tossed uh, by the wind. For let not that man expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double minded man, unstable in all his ways. So, a double minded man, uh, when we are thinking of two things, then we cannot do anything, we are unstable. So that is one important thing that we have to settle in our life, that we have to be not double-minded about things, even about doing things about the will of God and all, everything it comes, we have to be single-minded in our following and devotion to the Lord. That is one thing. 
uh, how to be free from that how to be free from that is again uh, the decision is upon us whether we want to please man or please god or do uh, we are we have to make a decision of doing one thing rather than thinking of two things and for that god we can pray to god god can help us but god does not consider us as puppets to drive us but god has given us a free will the will we have to choose that is up to us but god will help us and uh, then we can always have expectations from people okay uh, we we always have the tendency to be to expect or to demand from people something so we expect people to do this and uh, expect people to be pleased but rather uh, we uh, it's a very thing for my own life i have decided i sh- i should not want any i should not wait for any expectations i should not expect people to do even my wife or children i should not expect them expect them to do something for me but i should expect uh, i should i should expect the praise from god once we come to that uh, life it says in romans chapter 2 says in romans chapter 2 this is a this is a wonderful verse if we can come to this life it's it will set us free and it will take us on uh, will grow fast in our life romans chapter 2 verse 29 Uh, but he is a jew who is one inwardly and circumcision is that which is of the heart by the spirit not of the letter and his praise is not from men but from god so uh, his praise is not from men so when we we are all by nature looking for the praise of man we we, we do something and we uh, we want people to appreciate us and we maybe we may share something we may sing a song we may cook some meal or anything and we want we want the appreciation of people and when we don't get appreciation we feel bad okay that is expectation okay but if we come to a place where we are not looking for the praise of man but only the praise of god and if and when people praise us it is only an encouragement for us nothing else even if they don't praise it's all and if they don't praise huh and if they criticize too also it will not affect because we are dependent on the praise of god we are looking for the praise of god and the praise of god comes god god has his own way okay so if that is a way that is a place to come not looking for the praise of men but for the praise of god okay sam can take this uh while reading bible we come across few verses that are not under new covenant what should we do then see uh god's intention for us is that uh, we have to live in the new covenant all the time uh, so whatever be the verse we have to everything has got an application in the new covenant see even the things written in the uh old testament they are a shadow of the reality the reality is in the new covenant so like sabbath or uh, uh passover all these are a picture of of uh, the reality in the new covenant so our in- interest should be to live always in the new covenant uh, the life in the new covenant is a life in the holy spirit where the holy spirit will help us to come to god standard old covenant is uh, we can say we can tell it like this it's a effort of man to reach god standard but new covenant is god lifting us from our position to his standard so we have to look to god constantly as bible says fix your eyes on jesus so we have to look for his help constantly so what are be the words that we see in the bible how can i make it new covenant how can i make it new covenant in my life as i look to the help of the holy spirit as i see my helplessness and i look to god for his help and we can be absolutely sure what 
ever written in the God's word, when we come with an open mind, God is so much ready to help us to fulfill these verses. That's why the uh, the promises in the new covenant are so wonderful. God is always there on our side to help us. If God is for us, Bible says, who can be against us? God is always there on our side to help us fulfill these commandments. I have not clearly understood this. Uh, if you, if uh, whoever has written this can put it on the chat uh, directly, uh, it will be okay. But uh, what I understand is that while reading the Bible, we come across few verses that are not under the New Covenant. The whole of the New Testament is a, is the New Covenant. The whole of the New Testament, okay? And the Old Old Testament uh, uh, that was written for uh, our instruction. So they are also useful. And the Bible says all scripture is inspired by, by God. So uh, which are the few verses uh, which are not under the new covenant? If it is in the new, new testament, it is fully the new covenant. Everything is required. If it is old, old testament, those are written for our instruction the, uh, as an example for us to follow. So in that way, we have to take. I hope it is clear. How can we be an example or guide to our family member or a relative whose life isn't pleasing to God or if they are elder, do we just keep quiet and pray for their salvation? So, basically for everything, uh, whether a person is not isn't pleasing to God or pleasing to God, uh, we have to live a life that is uh, as an example, okay? Because we want to follow Jesus, so uh, even in our family, uh, everybody may be family of uh, the same believers, but all of us have to live uh, live as an example as a as one who is a disciple of Jesus. So okay, but and when there is a person who is not a believer or who is a or who is a believer but who is not living properly then uh, we have to pray okay we have to pray for the salvation if they are not believer and uh, uh, whenever an opportunity be do good to them sh show them by our good behavior uh, our life so that bible says there's a uh, there's a verse, uh, keep your behavior excellent. It says in uh, Peter, Second, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 12. Keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles. Okay, so that in the thing which they slander you as evildoers, they may, on account of your good deeds, as they observe them, glorify God in the day of visitation. So, uh, when when people look at our lives, uh, whether at workplace or wherever it is, neighborhood or at home, and uh, those who have not come to the Lord, when they see us, they may say words which are not, or maybe opposite. Uh, they may say words which, uh, as though they don't like us, but in their heart, they will see some life which is different and which is which they respect and in the day of their visitation I, I take it like this that when they are in need for God they will think of such people and they will find salvation okay and uh, so so uh, the life lived is a very important uh, thing and and to pray for and to pray for all those who need salvation especially in our homes, in our uh, relatives, is very, very, uh, is, is a very good thing and very important also. I don't know, we are reaching our time and there are still so many questions. So, what is the time now? 8-1. We'll take one more question and then we'll stop because now the questions have increased. Okay, so let me see which question to take.
So we'll just take two questions and finish. Okay. One is uh, this one. This is a very common thing. How to deal with your feelings? Bible says you shouldn't be dependent on feelings. But how can I control what I feel? Anger, sad, jealous, envy. Sam, take it. Yeah, we should not be, be living by a, our feelings. But uh, see, things like anger, jealousy, envy, they are sins. Uh, that we have to never ignore. Well, that we have to take it very seriously. Uh, see, just remember this word in uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. That's a very good verse to remember. It's written, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy. So mercy is for forgiveness of our sins and may find grace to help in time of need. So to overcome anger, jealousy, envy, etc., what we require is grace of God. You know, with our own strength, we cannot do that. So that is where we have to go in our heart to the throne of grace. And we have to ask, Lord, help me to overcome this. So when the, the time of need is the time of temptation, so in the time of temptation, we can go boldly to Jesus Christ and ask for his help. So there we have to uh, feel, uh, see, sins are not to be, never to be ignored. That is very serious uh, in God's sight. So there we have to approach God and receive his help. And uh, see, Bible says that if we are under the, under grace, sin will not have domain in our life. So if we fall, sometimes we, many times we may fall, but never get discouraged, get up quickly, confess, forsake and continue again. Continue to go to the throne of grace continuously. Continue to, uh, continue to fight, fight, Bible says, fight the good fight of faith and lay hold of eternal life. Uh, here it's also written how to deal with your feelings. See, I think you may have heard the story of uh, uh, three people walking. The First is facts, that is facts of God's word, then faith, and then feelings. So uh, faith was looking at facts, and feelings also was looking at faith and facts, and everything was going all right. Then they had to go, go through a very narrow bridge, and there the faith had a doubt whether the feeling is following, and when he looked back, the story says that the faith and feeling tumbled down and they went, uh, they, they fell. So that story tells us that we should not look at the feelings at all. Certain days feelings may be very high, but certain days feelings may be very low. But what we have to look is the facts in God's world. That is what, what we have to look, uh, concentrate all the time. So the uh, say Bible says, what, whatever the Bible says, facts of God's word that we have to look at that we have to look at the life of Jesus and we have to proceed so that is what we have to remember Bible says we look we walk by faith and not by sight so faith in God's word faith in God's promises facts of God's word these are the things that we, have, we can our mind should be focused on not in our feelings because one day feelings may be high another day feelings may be Feelings are always disappearing. Don't look at that. I want to say a few words on this. <clears throat> uh, see, brothers and sisters, this uh, feelings are there, and feelings, uh, you, as it says here, yeah, anger feelings may be there, sadness is there, and jealous feelings may be there, envy feelings are there. So, <clears throat> there are there is a one thing called living by feelings or living by our will. If you get it clearly, living by our feelings and then living by our will, our will. Okay, what I want to do, what I want to do, that is our will. Okay, so feelings will come, situations will bring feelings of maybe anger, maybe some situations will come which will bring some feeling of jealousy. We heard some news and a jealous feeling has come, a feeling has come. Okay, envy, 
a feeling of envy has come when we hear something sad as this uh, whatever it is it comes it's a feeling but that feeling has got not much power okay it's a feeling it's an emotion but what happens in our will is the one which will determine what person we are so suppose there is a jealousy and we and we in our heart we pray to god say lord at any time i don't want to be jealous i don't want i want to be on the side of yours no jealousy in my life I, that is what i choose okay so we have to live by our will okay uh, i don't know how easy it is to explain to you but for, for me jealousy would be one thing which would bring me down but i sought the lord and said lord i don't want jealousy at all in my life okay so suddenly when i hear some new some uh, some uh, a, a wave of jealousy may try to come but i say no that is not for me no huh? because i am living by my will i don't want it i don't want it uh, uh, that comes only with with you know with uh, uh, following god earnestly uh there's a way to live by our will and not by feelings i hope can god can give you light on that it will it will is a very liberating thing when we live by our will what we want to do is more important than what our what our feeling our feelings keep on changing but what we want to do that is dependent on us and i i stand against jealousy i stand against envy i stand against anger i stand against that and then the emotions also will change okay that is one way last question take this one because of hectic work schedules not being able to attend online fellowship meets and having less time for interactions how can one balance time without guilt as fellowship is important in christian life from what i understand i'll say there are hectic work schedules okay we have got if suppose we don't have control over it uh, maybe work uh, place it is very much tied down and we cannot attend the meetings okay and we have less time for fellowship and all that but but this is our life which uh, uh, at some situations with work is too much okay um, so there is no there is no reason to feel guilt god doesn't god doesn't Uh, uh if we neglect fellowship when we have time that is wrong when we are busy with our work with legitimate work and we are not able to come for a meeting god will sustain us we can be strong as a person who is attending the meeting okay but if we neglect a meet the fellowship when we can then we will lose out we will lose it that is not what god wants us to do so there is should, there should not be guilt when because of legitimate work and there should not be there is no place for guilt in that uh, about balancing our time okay wherever because we are busy then we need to see some time where we can read the word of god or pray that we have to see and do it okay we we, we try to adjust some some time somewhere in the day and do that but we not we need not feel jealous because of the hectic work schedule and just missing a meeting because of work should not put us into guilt but we can adjust our time accordingly to spend time with god maybe uh, while working itself our mind can be lifted up to god some you want to add something uh we should never be condemned about uh, uh not able to attend fellowship meetings because of uh, our heavy work schedule what we are, what we had to remember is most important thing is that uh, most important thing is not meetings most important thing is obeying jesus christ and living in fellowship with jesus that is the most important thing in christian life and as, as brother matthew was telling when we have got time and if we neglect fellowship that is serious but when we are really busy either with studies or i with work and we are not able to uh, attend some meetings online meetings also see i, I don't I, god will never condemn us for that uh it's uh, uh, you know it's written in uh, 
I think Hebrews, you know, I think that verse is in Hebrews. 10-25. Yeah, 10-25, yeah. It's written, not forsaking the assembling together as is the habit of some, but encourage one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. So, uh, it's written of some people who forsake the assembling together when they have got time and everything. See, that is serious. But when we are really tied up with uh, so many things and we may not be able to attend certain online meeting, that's okay. That's uh, what, what most important thing is, are you in fellowship with Jesus? Don't give importance to meetings. Give much more importance to uh, ask this question, am I in fellowship with Jesus? Am I obeying Jesus? Am I in right relationship with Jesus? Is there anything between I and Jesus Christ? That is the most important thing in Christian life. So we come to the end, brother, uh, this, uh, brothers and sisters. So we'll take it next time, some other time, because time will go.